boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reeds, and this is the review of the reimagining of the 1989 film of the same name, Roadhouse. This go around taking over for the late great Patrick Swayze. We have Jake Gyllenhaal stepping into those boots and <laughs> kicking some butt in a bar. And this film is directed by Doug Lyman, who has given us some really, really good films in his uh, filmography, uh, The Born Identity, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, uh, Edge of Tomorrow, uh, uh, American Made. He's made some really good films. And he decided to take on this remake <laughs> or reimagining, reboot, re-whatever of this 80s classic. And I say that clearly tongue in cheek you know roadhouse is probably one of the cheesiest action films to come out of that era and that's saying a lot it, coming from an 80s action film all the well not all but a good 80 percent of those films were cheesy and and we loved them for it i love roadhouse i love patrick swayze i love everything about that movie i still watch it to this day I, actually i watched it Oh, about a month ago, randomly, it was on uh, one of these stations, and I stopped. I was just flicking through, and it was on, and I stopped, and I watched it. I love Roadhouse. And so when they discussed remaking it, I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. And at one point, maybe about nine, ten years ago, they were discussing remaking Roadhouse and Ronda Rousey was going to be in the lead. Now, as much as that sounds interesting, you know, because they've truly taken it in a different direction by gender swapping, which I was cool with. I didn't have a problem with that. But what I did have a problem with the fact that Ronda Rousey can't act. <laughs> now, she can kick my butt. She has that down pack. I give her that. But she cannot act. God bless her. But <laughs> that didn't go through... Uh, because at that time, when they were going to make the film, Ronda Rousey so happened to lose her first MMA fight. And so when she lost that fight, she went into this deep depression. She didn't want to do anything. And actually, she was considering suicide. If, if, if anybody was into UFC or is into UFC and you remember that uh, story and what took place there, yeah, she was deeply depressed. And... Obviously, a movie was the last thing on her mind, and that fell through. So, years and years has passed, and finally, finally, we get the remake of Roadhouse. Now, Roadhouse, it was geared up for a remake. When we, I know we in the era of remakes and reboots and reimaginings and all this here. Uh, Roadhouse was right there for the picking. Is one of those films where you can greatly improve on it, in spite of the original film from 1989 being such a cult classic. And so I was really excited for this film. And Jake Gyllenhaal is one of those actors that I adore. I can watch in anything, and especially as of late, because he has been doing different type of roles as of late, you know, uh, action-oriented roles, yet heavier roles as well. He's very versatile. And I always pictured him as Batman. I, I always pictured him as Bruce Wayne Batman. And it never came to fruition. I don't know if he's aged out of it at this point, but I would still love to see him, especially after watching this. I, was, I would love to see him in that role. But he takes over as Dalton in this role. He is an ex-MMA MMA fighter who has a bit of a troubled past, and he's uh, kind of recruited uh, to come and be a bouncer at this bar that is the target of hooligans. And so uh, just the same premise as the first film, as the original. Now, let me get into this review. I, I fully acknowledge, I don't know if I made this clear enough, but I fully acknowledge that Roadhouse in a spectrum 
is not a good film. When I'm talking about the 1989, it is not a quote unquote good movie because it's silly. It's campy. It's unbelievable at points. You know, <laughs> some of the plot elements in that movie, but I don't care because that's what it was. You know, it was a turn your brain off fight, punchy, punchy explosion type movie. And that's what it gave you. And that's what I love about it. That's what a lot of people love about the original Roadhouse. So we fast forward 35 years later to this remake. And I fully expected to kind of turn my brain off. Like whatever. It was, it was late when I turned this on. I, it was probably about 11, 30, 12 o'clock. <laughs> you know, I, I turned it on to kind of go to sleep on you know what i'm saying just to have something on in the background and i was working late and i had not too long got home i said okay i'm gonna turn this on and just go to sleep on it i'll watch the rest of it tomorrow i end up staying <laughs> staying up and watching the entire movie till one something in the morning this movie had no business being as entertaining as it was i loved this movie I, I really did. I, I had such a good time with Roadhouse. Now, is it going to be in the award picture at the end of, the, uh, you know, end of the year? No, <laughs> no, it's not going to be none of that. But it was so entertaining. So good. Jake Gyllenhaal in this role as Dalton. I, it was like he was born to play this role. This is one of his best performances, and he doesn't say much. I mean, he, he of course, he had dialogue throughout the film. Don't get me wrong, but he does, he never had long monologues, you know. Uh, he didn't even have quippy jokes and whatever. Well, he did a couple of times, but I'll get to that later. But it was more of a, man, a broken man, and he was broken, yet he never truly showed it in the sense of, being depressed you know what i'm saying it, it, walking around suicidal and stuff like that because of what took place in his past because he has a dark secret not so much a secret because everybody knows it uh, but it's such a a heavy burden that's on him because of something that took place in his past but he is trying to kind of turn a new leaf in life and i loved his performance here you know, it was subtle. It wasn't nothing grandioso. It was subtle. And I enjoyed his performance. I, I'm just a huge fan of Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm sorry. I, I, it may be a little bias mixed up in there, but not a lot. It, it's not a lot. He Awesome. And the action, uh, his action sequences, he handled it perfectly. This may come off as blasphemous, but give this man die hard, man. Let him be let him be John McClay. I can see him as John McClay. You know, that, the dude is amazing in this role. And he didn't overshadow the performance by the late great Patrick Swayze, but he just made it his own. You know, and it, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Connor McGregor. Connor McGregor almost stole this movie actually you can make an argument that he did and this is his first film you know conor mcgregor ufc fame he even boxed uh floyd may rather once went the distance with him uh first time acting first time in front of the camera couldn't tell could not tell his character is so ridiculous it is such a ridiculous character in any other hands, it would have came off, like I was talking about earlier, cheesy, uh, no, <laughs> you know, just out of place and didn't fit the tone of the movie. His character doesn't, but at the same time, does. It's the way it was executed. I got to give props to Jake Gyllenhaal and Doug Lyman, the director, for guiding, uh, conor mcgregor in this direction because i can't believe that it was him because he never acted in the film before so i you know but i give him credit for doing the job but the uh the director and the lead actor here 
had to coach him up and get him on the right track here. And you can tell. You can tell. I, I loved Conor McGregor. He was crazy, man. He was Conor McGregor. <laughs> you know, he, he, he didn't he didn't go, you know, flip it on y'all. He was Conor McGregor. Everything you've seen Conor McGregor in press conferences or on uh, 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 weigh-ins when he has his US, UFC fights and stuff, that's who this character was just turned up to 11 and he, but yet it was different in sorts but it he nailed it I, look i'm proud of the cat i think he did an excellent job with this role as the uh main baddie in this film and the fights between uh conor mcgregor and jake gyllenhaal were excellent speaking of which moving on to the action sequences the fight sequences if you will choreographed perfectly this was a i know this had to be a difficult film to make because of the fighting style this isn't your typical you know boxing stance and you see in movies that's unrealistic in real life getting the boxing stance in front of somebody and think that you're going to win that fight they're going to they're going to bowl over you and so you <laughs> in real life it's more of a UFC type fight. You know, there's grabbing, there's holding, there's choking, there's slamming, all of that. So this uh, uh, film went in with that. And man, the fights, some of the, some of the sequences look very well. They look like they were really hitting each other. And Doug Lyman did a, a, a unique thing with some of the fights where the focus was shift to kind of a first person perspective and you're receiving the punches and you're 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 getting speared and driven to the ground and you can feel the actual thrust the punches and all that going on it is it was interesting and and innovative and man it added to this film the excitement of this film my flaws and this film has flaws <laughs> it has a it has a few flaws actually. Uh the third act falls apart to me. The the third act was kind of just silly in the sense of how we get to the climax and how everything kind of wraps up in this pretty shiny bow. Uh we get character turns that came out of nowhere. Uh <laughs> it was just, it was like rushed. It was like they got to the end when they were writing the screenplay and they're like, look, we got to finish this movie sometime. <laughs> let's just do this here. Okay, let's write that down. Yeah, and, and, and matter of fact, throw this in right here. Okay, yeah, that, that, that'll do it. And that was it. You know, it was kind of like just jumbled together, you know, whereas the film pr leading up to this third act was paced fairly well, you know. It was at a steady pace. And we get to the third act, then it looked, it felt like they were on cocaine, man. I mean, it was just zoom, 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 zoom. It was all over the place. And so uh, it kind of fell apart a little bit. Uh, Billy Mag uh, Magnuson, I believe I'm saying his name right. I like him as an actor. He didn't fit in this movie. He was in a completely different movie, I felt. Uh, as the quote-unquote main villain, as the uh, antagonist here, uh, I just didn't like his character. You know, his character didn't, uh, not his character. It's the way he played them. And I don't fault him. I, I just fault the way that character was written. You know, it, it was silly. He was silly and he had no actual goal. And it, it, no way to achieve his realistic way to achieve his goal. And what he was going after had no bearing on Dalton or on that uh roadhouse it could have been solved so easily and he was told this several times why didn't you just why don't you just burn the place down you know he, he was told this like from the beginning and it did it you know he, oh i know what i'm doing i'll handle it it's like oh come on come on man this is stupid this is silly <laughs> he was silly uh, but uh yeah i did like that and the third act uh, those were the two bugaboos for me and those were big bugaboos uh, but overall i loved the movie i enjoyed it and i wasn't expecting much went in blind i 
came out of it with my eyes wide open and that's all you could ask for in a film prime videos roadhouse which stars jake gyllenhaal gets a letter grade of a b minus yeah I, I really enjoyed this movie i did not think going into this weekend when you have roadhouse coming out and you have ghostbusters frozen empire came, came that came out at the same weekend that i would enjoy roadhouse more <laughs> Dad, you could Two weeks ago, you wanted to make that bet. You probably would have won money off of me. This, but that is weird, but I did enjoy Roadhouse more. It, it was a fun movie, a very fun movie. And if you want to check it out, it is currently on Prime Video. I would like to know, have you checked it out? What did you think of Roadhouse? Or do you still feel that the original is better? I, I'm, not a, I'm not comparing the two. I, these are two different movies, even though they have the same uh, log line, the same premise. It's a reimagining. It's different. You can't compare the two. Uh, one is a 80s film through and through. This one here is more of a uh, updated action movie. It, it's just, it, it fits the era, just like the original fit that era. But hey, maybe you can differentiate the two. I would love to know. Email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You can also look me up on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube. Like this video as well. Don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this review of Roadhouse. I want you all to know that I love you. Continue to love one another. And until we speak again, you all be blessed.